So in the last video, we were looking at this 5 volt signal coming in here that, uh, you know, it, it's switching between 0 and 5 volts, but it doesn't, it's not able to drive a whole lot of current. In fact, it, it was able to drive less than a, 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 a milliamp, and we're trying to turn an LED on that requires 20 milliamps. And I mentioned that we could use um, these little guys here, these transistors, and the transistors would work as, you know, basically a, you know, a current amplifier or, or a switch. And in this video, I want to talk about how that how that's actually going to work. Um, so if we go and look at this is basically um, a picture here that I've drawn of of a transistor, um, and hopefully it looks like the ones we were just looking at. And um, there are basically a couple different types of transistors. And, and just just to be clear about what we're talking about here, um, the types of transistors we're going to be talking about is kind of the most generic sort, and that's a bipolar bipolar junction transistor. So a bipolar uh, junction transistor, and there should be another S in there. And this is kind of the most common sort of transistor, or, or usually if someone, you know, you'll, you might even see this referred to as just a bipolar transistor, um, or even just a transistor. If someone just says transistor and they don't specify, they're probably talking about a bipolar junction transistor. Um, and it's and it, and they often look like this. They could come in different uh, sorts of packages, but this is this is the sort that I have. Um, and there are two types, I guess, of of transistor. There's um, that you might come across. There's NPN, and there's PNP. And in this video, I'm actually not going to really talk about PNP at all, um, other than just to mention that it is it's another type of transistor that exists. I find that in in the work that I do, um, I'm using NPN transistors probably. I don't know, almost 99% of the time. Um, it's it's not that often that I find myself using a PNP transistor, particularly um, in digital electronics. Um, they, you know, we do use them from time to time, and, and perhaps I'll make another video um, uh, that talks about the differences here. But rather than confuse you with all the differences, um, I do, I'm just going to focus on one type of transistor, which is the most common that you'll come across, which is the bipolar NPN transistor. And this is what it might look like. And it's got three... Uh, leads here to connect to the circuit, which is a little bit unusual um, if, if you're used to looking at, at things like resistors or capacitors or even inductors, um, certainly batteries. All of these things have two leads, um, which, which kind of makes sense when you put them into a circuit. You can put them in in series, you could put them in in parallel. Three leads is a little bit different, but hopefully hopefully it'll, it'll start to make sense. And just so uh, when we're talking about this, the, the leads have um, each have different names. And so, just so we know what they are, uh, there's an emitter, a base, and a collector. And this is this is how they're laid out in this particular transistor that I have. The, the transistors that I'm, I'm using, um, let me just grab one here and take a look. It's a 2N3904, so 2N3904. And that's just one type of bipolar NPN transistor. There are... Um, there are lots of other types that are very, very similar to what I'm what I'm describing. This has particular um, attributes that you can you can look up in the data sheet. But but both basically, uh, this, there's a number of different transistors that are very similar to the one I'm talking about. Um, and so, uh, the three leads are the emitter. Let me make that a little clearer. My handwriting's not that great here. Let's see: emitter, base. and collector. So emitter, base, and collector, those are the three leads. And if we look at the circuit schematic uh, for this transistor, what we're going to see is the way that it's drawn is it's usually drawn like this. And there's a little arrow on this guy. And <clears throat> these are the three leads coming off. And sometimes you'll see it drawn with a circle around it. Sometimes that circle won't be there. Um, that's just a matter of preference, really. And this lead over here is the base. Uh, this guy up here is the collector, and and this guy down here is the emitter. And so this is the circuit diagram for for a, an NPN transistor. And the way it works is basically um, the transistor allows a current to flow um, in basically in this direction. And and I'm I'm going to use sort of conventional current flow. So this we're going to say this is uh, our positive. Uh, voltage up here. This is our negative voltage here, and so current is flowing in this direction. Of course, we, we know that electrons actually for, flow from negative to positive, but in conventional current flow, we, we talk about it going this in this direction. 
And so current will flow in this direction from the collector to the emitter. And the, the way we talk about that is we actually call this the collector current. Collector current. And sometimes you'll see that abbreviated as I sub C, so the current of the collector. And so this collector current will flow um, based on whether there is another current flowing from the base to the emitter. So there's another current flowing over here from the base to the emitter. So the base is slightly more positive than, than the emitter in this case. And so this we call the base current, base current, and that will sometimes be abbreviated as I sub B, current of the base. And so the way that a transistor works is that it basically will automatically adjust the collector current based on uh, the base current. And so what you'll see is you'll see that the collector current, what the transistor is trying to do is it's trying to make sure that the collector current is equal to the base current times times some value, and it's usually a pretty large value, um, usually like 100 to 200. 100 is pretty common. So times 100. So this transistor is going to say, if there's some sort of base current flowing here, then I'm going to take that, I'm going to multiply it by 100, and I'm going to try to make the collector current equal to that. So another way to look at this, um, kind of a neat little uh, sort of uh, um, analogy here, is you can almost think of the transistor, if I, if I kind of zoom in on what's going on inside that transistor, is I have the base here, and the base comes in, and there's actually, you have to, you have to make sure that the base the current flowing from the base to the emitter is, is flowing in that direction because there's a, um, a, effectively a diode inside the transistor. So this is the base up here, and this down here is going to be our emitter. And so you're going to have current flowing in this direction, and you could actually put a little ammeter in here. So this is, this is going to be like a little meter that's going to register how much current is flowing. So this is going to look at our, our base current, I sub B over here. And <clears throat> based on what that little meter reads, we're going to have effectively what is a variable resistor that allows the transistor, the transistor, you can almost think of the transistor as a variable resistor uh, because it has the ability to adjust how much current flows through it by sort of adjusting this variable resistor. And then, of course, there's another little measure over here of, of amperage. And this guy is the uh, is going to be our collector. And so you can almost think of there being a little guy inside the transistor who has got his hand on this on this variable resistor, and he's looking at he's looking at the base current, and he's thinking to himself, I want to look at this base current, and then I want to adjust this variable resistor so that when I look at the collector current then the collector current is equal to the base current times 100. And this, of course, over here is measuring the collector current, I sub C. So this little guy is inside the transistor. He's got his hand on this variable resistor, and he can, he can move this up and down to, to uh, adjust the resistance between the collector and the emitter. You can almost think of it as adjusting the resistance between the collector and the emitter to allow uh, a current to flow from the collector to the emitter. But he's looking at both of these ammeters. He's looking to see, okay, I want to see how much current is flowing from the base to the emitter. And whatever that is, I'm going to adjust this thing to see if I can get the current flowing over here from the collector to the emitter to be 100 times what I see over here. So this guy is kind of looking at both of these meters, and he wants, he wants to make sure, so he's sort of like thinking to himself, this is a little thought bubble here. He's thinking to himself, okay, I want to make sure that this is 100 times what this says. And he's going to adjust this up and down to do that. And, and that is basically what a transistor does. You can almost think of it of as a variable resistor that is controlled by this other current over here.